Now let us see what are the different agents which can be used in Parkinson's disease. We have the following classes. The first one is anticholinergics. We have examples like benztropine and trihexyphenidyl. The second agent which is used commonly is amantadine. We all know that amantadine is a very uh, uh, regularly used antiviral agent. And then we have monoamine oxidase B inhibitors. Examples of these are silagiline and uh, racigiline. And then we have number four, carbidopa, levodopa, which are the gold standard for the treatment of uh, Parkinson. And we also have another agent called as benzeracide. Apart from carbidopa with levodopa, we also have the dopamine agonist here. We have both agents which are ergot derived as well as non ergot derived. The examples are bromocryptine, tramipexol, dropinirole, rotigotin, and apomorphine, which is the rescue medication. And apart from that, we have another very important class of drugs, which is COMT inhibitors, catechol omethyltransferase inhibitors. Examples of these agents are anticoponin, tolcopon. So let us see these agents uh, class by class and uh, try to review what are the important parameters and most important, try to understand what is the place in therapy, where exactly are we going to use these agents and what do we monitor. Now let us start with the first class of drugs that is anticholinergics. As I mentioned earlier, we have two agents. One is benztropine and this next is trihexyphenidyl. So these are quite uh, older agents which are used. So when we look at the use of anticholinergics, why exactly are we using them? All we know from the Parkinson, what we have discussed earlier, is that there is a decrease in the dopamine, right? Dopaminergic neurons are being affected. So that is the reason we're seeing all these symptoms. But at the same time, we have to remember that there is an imbalance between dopamine as well as acetylcholine. Dopamine concentration is going down and acetylcholine concentration is going up. So because of the increase in the concentration of acetylcholine, we are seeing some of the effects. That is the reason anticholinergics are being used. But if you look at how they are used, they're mainly used for tremor. Studies have shown that it does help tremor. So if a person has only resting tremor as the clinical presentation, and it will probably use if um, either benztropine or trihexyphenidyl is used. But at the same time, we have to give importance to the adverse effects. We have to remember that most of our population will be elderly, will be geriatric population. And as it is, they have a lot of issues, uh, either with you know, urinary retention, constipation, and we do see some memory issues with them as a person is growing older. So when we're using anticholinergics in them, all these adverse effects kind of worsen, whether it is blurred vision, any you know, commonly anticholinergic effect is seen. So that is one issue what we're having with anticholinergics. Definitely, we have to take into consideration the age of the patient uh, and what problems they're having before we start using anticholinergics. We also have to remember that probably the younger population will be able to tolerate it much better than the elderly population. So when do we use anticholinergics? We use if a patient is younger, probably younger than 60 or 65. All right, and they're not having any of these issues. They definitely can be used as a monotherapy or as an adjunct with carbidopa, levodopa. So right now, anticholinergics for only resting tremor.